format, new rules, new Pokemon, same game. Well, except new game at the same time. <laughs> um, but still, you know, again, what a amazing list of accomplishments here for Eric. You know, getting top four at Worlds last year is really an amazing accomplishment. And again, the fact that he's no stranger to this international stage certainly helps a little bit in terms of the nerves, in terms of handling the sort of uh, mental aspects of playing Pokemon as a competitive game when there are so many stakes on the line here. Mm -hmm. Again, if you lose this round of top eight, you will not advance in the tournament. You're done. You're just knocked out, unfortunately, for the rest of the event. So best of luck to both these trainers. I'm going into team preview and sort of talking about how these teams pair up. It's going to be super interesting to me because Eric has a team I think we've seen a lot of Pokemon on. We're very familiar with what they do. Mm -hmm. Corviknight, a little bit of a surprise, but I think nothing that we can't handle. But on Marco's side of the field, the Dragovish, the Sylveon, the Compelder, a lot of interesting picks that, well, we've seen do well in isolation. You know, we saw the Sylveon earlier. We saw Brady's Conkelder do some amazing work for him in that past game. We haven't seen them all together on the same team. So what I'm curious for Marco is how is he going to navigate this team knowing that on Eric's side of the field that Corviknight is going to be a huge threat for everything that isn't named Rotom Heat. It potentially the Sylveon though too. Remember, even you mentioned this in the in the last uh, series that Sylveon gets a chance to have that mystical fire. It does. So we don't know particularly what the Sylveon is running completely, but that's not what we're seeing on the field right now. It is going to be Eric Rios with the Gastrodon and the Excadrill, and Marco with that Whimsicott and Duraludon. This is a great way for Marco to start things off. Duraludon and Whimsicott, when paired together, and when you activate that Dynamax factor for that Duraludon offer a ton of damage potential and that's exactly what you want to be looking for against a team like Eric's that relies on those steel type Pokemon like the Exedra, like the Corviknight to sort of use their defenses and outlast whatever's on the op opposing side of the field. First things first, gotta have a turn one Dynamax again in the top <laughs> cut, why not? So let's take a look at this Excadrill that's going to be hitting the field in full force now gonna be really well protected if that toga gets decides to go for something like a follow me but it could also go for something like a yawn who knows we're not gonna find out just yet because it's also time for marco to dynamax dynamaxing really early this is gonna be a hyper aggressive game one for both of these players in this set duraludon now taking on that life-size form huge huge moves yeah and duraludon is a pokemon that likes to be dynamaxed when paired with whimsicott because fake tears from whimsicott will drop the special defense of a pokemon like excadrill mm -hmm. by two stages and open up the possibility for duraludon to pick up an easy knockout yeah but you're seeing the fact that this excadrill is going to move first going for the max quake and does over half damage imagine if Marco had not Dynamax that Duraludon, it would not still be on the field right now to get attack off itself. But because we saw that special defense drop, I'm assuming that this Max Wormer is going to be a targeting down that Excadrill, which does a little bit less damage. Not going to be super effective there, but I think the more important thing that we're actually going to see is that secondary effect of the Max Wormwind, which is dropping the attack. And Whimsicott is all available on the field to sort of offset the fact that the Duraludon is currently slower than the Excadrill. I think when you're running Duraludon and Whimsicott together, there's an interesting balance you have to take between prioritizing those fake tiers to drop special mm -hmm. defense versus prioritizing speed control. For Marco in this situation, I think that speed control is what he must prioritize. Even if the Togepiss goes for something like a follow me to redirect, as long as he doesn't attack with that Max Warm Wind again, that attack will connect, it will be doing some big damage, and you want to make sure that you make these Dynamax turns count, especially when Duraludon is threatening to be knocked out by something like the Excadrill on the opposing side of the field. Here's the speed control. Tailwind going to fire off there from the Whimsicott, which means this Duraludon is going to be able to go first. Togekiss, though, takes this Max Lightning like a champ, even though that is going to be super effective. The Max Lightning secondary effect also setting the terrain of the battlefield, so Electric Current will be across all of it, but a secondary Max Quake now from this extra girl right into the Duraludon. We saw how much it did before, but is this Duraludon going to hang on? That attack drop from the Max Wormwind in the previous turn was huge. It's possible that Marco has specifically trained his Duraludon just to have the opportunity to survive that second Max Quake. 
Unfortunately for Marco, the Toki Kiss is right behind its buddy Excadrill to pick up the KO with that Dazzling Gleam, but still, just a really well-trained Pokemon. I think Marco tried to make the best of a unfortunate sort of disadvantage for a lead. He's forced to reveal this Compelter in a spot where it would rather just fire off those fighting type moves without mm -hmm. something like the Togekiss on the opposing side of the field. There is still Tailwind in play, and depending on how this Punk Elder is trained, there's always the possibility that it could outspeed the Togekiss, but Eric recognizing the fact that the Togekiss is the win condition against the Kunk Elder, and Intimidate is always a nice thing to have against it as well. And following sort of the lead from the last round, where you keep the Togekiss safe as soon as the Kunk Elder is revealed. Whimsicott, showing off that it has oh. Protect as an option, that's a uh, very unique tool to have onto the Whimsicott, but it's not going to protect it completely from this Max Steel Spike. So getting a lot of value from these Dynamax turns is going to be Eric. Um, more importantly, you do have the defense increase when you have this Conkelder that's going to be right across the field from it. Ice Punch, maybe hoping to get the freeze, but not going to. And would you look at this, Flame Orb actually going to be the held item for this Conkelder that tells us a lot of information about the fact that this Conkelder might end up having that Guts ability. It has to. I mean, why else would you want to burn why yourself? Else? Uh, it will boost its damage output, and, and that's going to be really important if this Kunk Helder is able to find an opening. You have to wonder why the Whimsicott went for the Protect that turn. Again, like you said, that's a very uncommon move, and if you look at the board positioning right now, there's not much that that Whimsicott can do. But the fact that it was able to stall out the end of Dynamax of that uh, Excadrill and could come back and set up a Tailwind to something like the Dracovish, which loves to be faster than the opposing Pokemon on the opposite side of the field, is Marco identifying a way through, identifying a win condition, and trying to find his way towards that spot on the field. Ooh, but the Dracovish Swisher not only was good in order to take advantage of the Tailwind, but also because it's going to eat that Flare Blitz that came out from Eric's Arcanine. Easy. And he's, yeah, that he, you said it better than I could. Yeah, and it's interesting to see Dracofish used as a defensive switch-in because Dracofish is not a Pokemon that is necessarily known for its defenses. I think a lot of people expect to see a Dracofish be a very fast, very frail Pokemon that uses the Strong Jaw ability in addition with the move Ficious Rend, which doubles in damage whenever it's faster than your opponent. So if that is the strategy that Marco has decided to run onto this Dracovish, he certainly has an amazing opportunity right now to capitalize on it if he can call the switch in from the Gastrodon correctly. That's fine now. Dracovish going to call that correctly. We'll get the crunch instead. Excadrill going for Iron Head into the Conkelder. So, oh, oh no. gets the flinch. Ooh, that is a bad flinch for Marco. He wanted that Conkelder to pick up the KO onto that Excadrill or maybe even that Gastrodon as well with something like a Drain Punch. Really, really unfortunate that even in the Tailwind that Excadrill was faster, you know for sure now the Excadrill will outspeed that Conkelder again and could potentially start fishing for more flinches. So, it's a one reason why you run something like Iron Head, having that secondary effect kick in is always nice. But looking at the field, Eric is in a spot where he has to reposition a little bit. I like how he's stacking up those Intimidates down onto the Pokemon on the opposing side of the field. I'm curious what this Dragovish is going to do, because again, if it's not locked into that something like the Crunch, this would have been a really interesting turn to go for a water type attack. But I think that's a solid indication that this Dragovish might be you know, a little bit faster than we anticipate, and maybe even a little bit, uh, you know, locked into that crunch as a result. Did go for the crunch again, and was the fastest Pokemon on the field. Now, we saw the Drain Punch as well. Uh, we're going to see this terrain disappear from the battlefield, and kind of what I'm looking at in this situation to, to really get set up is, how does Marco really maneuver around getting the Dracovish back out to potentially kind of deal with what the item is that it might be holding? It's a tough switch. You have to s essentially send out your Whimsicott and hope that either your opponent doesn't target it or just accept the fact that you will not be getting another Tailwind or another Fake Tears up in this game in order to make that switch. It looks like Eric hasn't targeted it yet, though. 
No, not going to oh, target it yet. Actually okay. went into the double target into the Kinkelder. Was hoping to get the knockout there, but Marco ended up with the Protect. So that's not going to be a knockout this turn. That was a free switch for the Whimsicott, and that might actually put Marco in a much better position than when we expected. It's another opportunity to Tailwind at least. I don't see this Whimsicott using another Fake Tears just because Kunkelder and Dracovish are known to be physical attackers. They won't necessarily benefit from the special attack drop. But Eric still has all four of his Pokemon on his side of the field, and Marco is taking a ton of damage when he's switching these Pokemon in and out. He needs to find a way to even up the knockout count soon if he wants to try and win this game. Got to even it up somehow. Arcanine going for the Flare Blitz, though. It will connect with the Dracovish. Not going to be super effective, and of course you're going to see the recoil damage there as well, but the Iron Head is going to be the double into it. It doesn't really particularly matter. Just a kind of more of a maneuvering turn here for Marco more than anything. I like how Eric is targeting down that Sun Kelder, though. I think he's recognizing that if any of Marco's remaining Pokemon can threaten the Pokemon that he has left, it is going to be that Sun Kelder. Yes, Eric still does have the Togekiss in the back of his party, but, you know, enough Drain Punches, the Kunkelder's health is no longer a concern. It can just keep healing up. By switching out the Kunkelder, um, it drops the Intimidates. And Dracovish is in a fine position now to try and pick up the Knockout onto that Arcanine, even with something like a Crunch. Again, it has not been Intimidated. It is going to be able to deal the maximum possible damage from those attacks. And hypothetically, if Marco can remove the Arcanine, can remove the Intimidate, and then find a way to support the Dracovish and the Kunkelder, possibly by s rotating them out enough. You know, this might be an opening he needs. The Gastrodon isn't going to be dealing a lot of damage. Gastrodon is going to be dealing a lot of damage. You mentioned that, you know, Marco really needed to find an opportunity to get the knockout and even up the Pokemon score. So Eric is going to be able to kind of get the sword stance off now that the Arcanine is not on the field anymore. You can put something next to it, maybe the Gastrodon, maybe the Togekiss, a really great supportive partner either way for this extra girl that just got a chance to sword stance. I think the Togekiss is the Pokemon you want to reveal here just because you want to protect the Excadrill, which, again, using the sword stance indicates that the Excadrill is the Pokemon that Eric is looking for to deal the damage it needs to, uh, you know, win this game, to go on to game two. Knowing that the Dracovish, again, is most likely running one of those uh, choice items and is locked into attack also helps this Togekiss out as well because the Dracovish isn't going to be dealing big damage against it as long as it's locked into Crunch. So I'm curious to see who Eric is going to target here. I think you have to aggressively target that Dracovish while, you know, mm -hmm. using Follow Me to protect your Excadrill and just hope that by the time Kunkelder comes back, you can just handle it. Well, that doesn't do too much. Maybe instead, uh, the Excadrill is not going to just single target anything, but going to go for the Earthquake instead, which is going to hit every single Pokemon on the field. Not going to hit the Whimsicott through its Protect, but will get the Knockout onto the Dracovish. So that was a very good play from Eric, just recognizing, you know what? I know your Whimsicott has Protect. Let's and get the Knockout. Yeah, and knowing that the Excadrill brought Earthquake as well is good information because as long as the Togekiss is around on the field, it can use Follow Me, protect the Excadrill from any priority attacks or maybe even a Moonblast or something that would deal damage to it. And it can go for that Earthquake and it can pick up the Knockout definitely on the Whimsicott and eventually on the Kinkelder. After the Sword Stance, I would imagine that the Earthquake should do enough in one hit to KO that Kinkelder, but you never know. This is Pokemon. You always got to keep those options yep. open. But the more important thing to highlight is that, again, Togekiss, Excadrill, Follow Me, and then Excadrill, it does the damage. And Marco has no way to stop that. Uh, mm. uh, interesting that he went for the double protect on Whimsicott here, possibly looking to get more information out of this game one. I don't think he was looking for that as a part of his win condition. Yeah, well, the Follow Me is going to come out from Eric's Togekiss just to see whether or not, you know, might have to eat a damage from something on the field. But unfortunately, the Earthquake is going to be enough to seal up the series with a double knockout. Eric is going to take that very first game of the set. And another interesting little piece of information is we didn't see any mock punch revealed onto that Kunkelder. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, Marco most likely going for a drain punch on the off chance that the Excadrill did target down that Whimsicott with a single target move. Uh, so just a good board positioning there. I think he made uh, the best play that he could in that situation. But unfortunately for him, 
uh, Eric just had the easy option of, again, follow me, Earthquake. And I think that going into game two, Marco has to find a way to stop that extra drill from getting that sword stance up alongside of the Togekiss. When you look at the Pokemon he brought to this game, the Dracovish, the Conkeldur, the Duraludon, on paper, all three of those sort of answer the extra drill. But because uh, Eric is running that Excadrill with such a defensive partner core with the Arcanine, the Togekiss, and the Gastrodon. He can mm -hmm. figure out what Pokemon he needs on the field to protect it, ensure that Pokemon is next to it, and then just allow the Excadrill to do, the, do its own thing. And that's why Excadrill has been so popular in this format so far. It gets access to great coverage type moves. You can run it with something like a Sword Stance and boost its own attack so that it's dealing big damage. and. On top of all of that, when you take into account Dynamax, the max steel spike boosting defense, max place bo boosting special defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw how huge those uh, defense boosts were at the beginning of the game in terms of how much damage Eric's own Pokemon were taking. There's, it's another sort of defensive Dynamax mode that happens to work out really well, hey, offensively too. You got your supportive Pokemon for your sweeper, and you've got the secondary effects of your sweeper for your supporters. I love that this, there's the synergy there between the two, and the pieces are really fitting together in that puzzle. But, you know, I don't think that Marco played badly in that first game. No. I, I don't think there's too much that he necessarily needs to change or adjust in order to, to really work around that, except maybe some minor adjustments to how the Excadrill uh, is allowed to just get these max moves off. There was just so much offensive pressure there. There was, and I think that Marco does need to adjust a little bit. I agree that the Dracovish and the Conkeldur were, I think, good picks against mm -hmm. Eric's team. You know, I think that they have a lot of offensive potential that, uh, again, provided it's unchecked, can definitely pick up a lot of KOs on top onto Eric's team. But if you look at his lead of the Duraludon and the Whimsicott, the Whimsicott, it did get a fake tears in, but it still missed the knockout. It did get a tailwind up, but it was hard to tell whether or not that speed control actually really mattered in this game. I think that if you want to lead Duraludon Whimsicott, you need to make sure that your Whimsicott is doing the most it can to support the Duraludon consistently throughout the game. Otherwise, it's just stuck out on the field using Protect and otherwise not accomplishing much. Not too many adjustments, at least in the beginning of this game two. Eric with the Excadrill and the Arcanine. Marco with the Duraludon and the Whimsicott. Now you have the ability to kind of set up here for some big damage, which is what both of these players are going to do when they have their offensive Pokemon on the board as well as a great supporter beside them. So it's no surprise to me that Eric is going to go for that turn one Dynamax again. We'll have to wait and see whether or not Marco decides to match that. But at least for now, Excadrill in that game one was able to get so much da done with this Dynamax. And would you look at that? Marco <laughs> is going to match that Dynamax with the, the Duraludon as well. And I think that's actually a really important note to make that Duraludon might be trying to get a bit more damage done onto either the Excadrill or I think even more importantly, maybe some of these supportive Pokemon that are helping that Excadrill and enabling that Excadrill. Arcanine is the threat I think Duraludon needs to target down. Arcanine has Intimidate. We just saw Arcanine go for a helping hand. If Duraludon is able to find a way to knock out this Arcanine, and also lower the attack of this Exodrill thanks to that Max Wormwind. I think that Marco is going to be in a much better spot than game one. But that being said, this Exodrill still is going to attack this turn. And even with that attack drop, the Max Quake is going to put it in KO range of another powerful attack. So yep. I like how the Duraludon got more utility out of the Max Wormwind this time around by targeting the Arcanine over the Excadrill. I think that was a great adjustment from Marco. I also like how the Whimsicott prioritized the Tailwind over the Max Tears like we saw back in Game 1, allowing the Duraludon to move first to get that attack drop in first. That's very, very important. But he still needs to call correctly who this Duraludon should target going into this next turn. If he ignores the Excadrill, it's very possible that the Duraludon is going to get knocked out. If he ignores the Arcanine, then it's very possible that the Arcanine has some sort of fire type attack that can also, you know, potentially knock out that Duraludon, maybe knock out the Whimsicott. You know, even though Eric, or even though Marco is in a better position than he was in game one, I think that Eric still has a 
decent board position. And unless Marco is able to find a couple of KOs before this Tailwind expires, I think Eric will be in a similar position that he was in in Game 1. Well, this is a bit of an adjustment. The Dracovish is going to be coming out just a little bit earlier while the Tailwind is still active. But Duralina going for a Max Knuckle. Oh my goodness, that's not going to do too much damage to that Excadrill, but you do get the attack boost. You get an attack boost, which is interesting because Duraludon is a special attacking Pokemon. So these Max Quakes boosting up the special defense on Eric's side of the field are going to be uh, more important than the attack boost from that Max Knuckle. But that being said, it's a good reveal of a tech move. I think that Marco wanted to keep that secret in game one for this situation. Unfortunately for Marco, the damage output just wasn't there, most likely due to those Max Quakes boosting up the special defense of that Excadrill. I think it's more for the Dracovish that's on the field than anything for the, uh, the attack boost. Yeah. So I would definitely consider that more of Marco recognized, I'm not going to get too much more done if I go for the Max Wormerin. Maybe, maybe get really lucky with a damage roll and have my Duraludon survive, but I would rather set up for being able to take out this Excadrill or one of its partners with my own Pokemon. I think that when you said Dracovish is the answer, Dracovish might be the answer. <laughs> Dracovish with plus one attack might be the answer even. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. And being able to utilize Dynamax in a turn where, you know, the knockout was inevitable is really a good play from Marco. Like, look at how much damage that crunch does <laughs> with that extra attack boost. Unfortunately, Arcanine going to be felled. Max Steel Spike not going to be able to give that secondary effect to the Arcanine, but the Excadrill is still very healthy. It's still very healthy. It has a plus one's defense boost, which Maybe will help with now. that <laughs> drain punch. But I'm curious how much health Conkelder is going to get back here. Yeah, that, that's a really good amount of health. And with the burn, with the guts ability boost on all of that Conkelder's attacks, uh, I think Eric is forced to send in the Togekiss here to either redirect away the Mach Punch, or redirect away that crunch that we saw from that Dracovish, or just otherwise, again, protect this Excadrill so that it can be going on the offensive for Eric. It's possible he could also make an adjustment to his play style here. You know, Togekiss going on the offense is always an interesting option, something you do have to keep in mind, even though Dynamax is no longer available to it. Conkelder has taken some damage, possible with a critical hit or two, if this Togekiss is running the Super Luck variant that we've seen so many other times before. That would be enough damage to knock it out, but no redirection. Togekiss just going on the attack. So, yeah. It is yeah. going to be an, an attack, and Ice Punch now going to go straight into the Togekiss. That's going to be super effective damage. Dazzling Gleam, I don't know if this is going to be quite That's enough for the Dracovish, hit. but it was a critical hit on the Conkelder, so it's going to be able to avenge its fallen brethren. But the Tailwind is now over, and now we are down to the final two Pokemon for both of these players. We'll see what this final Pokemon is for Eric. It's going to be that Gastrodon, which really Marco might have some trouble with. It's interesting because if the Dracovish was locked to into any other move other than Crunch, then I would say yes, he will be struggling against yeah, this Gastrodon. That's true. But uh, not going to have to worry about it. I think the bigger question is, will this Moonblast knock out this Togekiss? Moonblast going to Togekiss. It, it is. is enough to get the knockout. So now it's just going to be Gastrodon left against this Dracovish and this Whimsicott. Earth Power, though, into the Dracovish. Oh, it does get the knockout. So now it's just Gastrodon versus this Whimsicott. Now, what's interesting is that Whimsicott ta sometimes runs like a grass type move. Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. S sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe not in this instance because we saw it use Moonblast, but Fake Tears is going to have to be the play. That's Marco's win condition here just to try to drop that special defense as much as possible before this Moonblast kind of I happens. I wonder if Marco knows how many Fake Tears he needs to get down onto this Gastrodon oh, the before it can comfortably pick up the knockout with one or two Moonblasts. You have to remember that Gastrodon does get access to Recover, and in this exact situation is when you wish you had Recover. Fortunately for Eric, he was lucky with that burn. He got it on the first try, and he will be able to cycle in these protects so that Whimsicott will take more and more damage, can avoid the fake tears, and otherwise try and outlast this Whimsicott. Wow. You know, there definitely still is an opening for Marco here, but it's going to take a few turns to play out. I think we'll see Marco attempt one more fake tears before sort of Trying going go all in on the moon blast, but... 
You know, it's it's going to be interesting. It's it's definitely a few slow turns, but it's going to be a huge, huge, huge uh, attack from that Whimsicott when it's ready for it. Gastrodon just going to be cycling through those protects again, and I expect in that this Whimsicott is just continuing All to right. go. Oh, well, okay, no, okay. it's it's about time they go for the Moonblast now. That might give a little bit of information to Eric that two fake tears might be enough. It might be enough, and... I think that if Eric is expecting it to not be enough, we'll see him go for the recover here. That is a safe play. That is how you make sure that you're still around after this big damage. Wow, but with a critical, critical hit. hit, it is enough to knock out that Gastrodon in one hit and tie up this game. How crazy was that? Wow. I mean, the burn. The burn. No, the burn was and huge, then but then the critical the hit, critical hit. Made it not matter at all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> A little luck here, a little luck there, a little super luck for a Togekiss, and then we're going on to game three. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so well played though. I, I definitely respect the adjustment that Marco made within that series because the only reason why we were at the end game that we were at was because the Duraludon almost was used as a bit of a sacrifice there in order to get those secondary effects off and really set up the Dracovish to really do what it was supposed to do in that set. Yeah, Marco recognized that the Duraludon wasn't the Pokemon that was going to be winning the game for him. And that's the key adjustment between games one and games two for Marco. In game one, we saw Duraludon really commit to dealing those max warm wounds to try and lower the attack of that Excadrill and just try and position his team around that way. And then he realized after that loss, I cannot win this game if I'm relying on dropping my opponent's stats. There's just too much they can do to get around that, yep. you know, Gastrodon included. So if I boost my own attack with this fighting type Max Knuckle, especially with a Pokemon like Dragovish, who's just so fast and so powerful, it doesn't matter what move I lock into as long as it's not that water type move. I can deal the big damage and then hopefully I can find a way to clean up. I really would love to know how much damage that minus four uh, moon, well, okay, how much the moon blast from the Whimsicott would have done to the minus four Gastrodon. Yes. The fact that that ended on a critical hit was super exciting, but the fact that that information isn't <laughs> yeah, quite that's, known that's by bad us for, is, for the yeah. two of them. Because you have to wonder if this match is going to, you know, come down to those last two Pokemon yet again. Looking at the Pokemon the, they've been playing and how they've been playing this matchup, I think that you don't really adjust the Pokemon that you bring. I think you no. just adjust how you're playing. Absolutely. And the Whimsicott Gastrodon finale is always going to be a possibility as a result of that. Just because the Duraludon Whimsicott, assuming Marco goes for that as a lead again, is going to be comfortable sort of setting up for that kind of an endgame. Endgame is what it's all about. It's you just like you can start off with a turn one Dynamax, which makes sense. I, you almost have to when you're facing, okay, when you're running Duraludon Whimsicott as a lead, it's not so much you almost have to, I feel like you do have to, just mm -hmm. because the Duraludon really wants to be taking advantage of the fact that Whimsicott is right there next to it, ready to support it, right off the bat, fake tears, tailwind, you name it, Whimsicott's got it. Right, but you're using those Dynamax turns specifically for kind of like the mid to end game, which I think is really critical. You're, you're setting yourself up for the mid to end game early on in the game. Yes. Yes. But again, you do have to make sure that you Dynamax with Duraludon immediately. One adjustment I'd like to see for Marco, uh, especially if we're talking about how to sort of set up that Dragovish maybe a little bit better, uh, could be to maybe try and weave it in a little bit earlier. I mean, we saw it, you know, pretty mm -hmm. consistently outspeed a lot of things. So we know that the Gastrodon is going to be in the back of Eric's party, but as we've seen in other matches, being able to sort of lure out the Gastrodon, especially when you're threatening with a very powerful water type move, is a great way to control what your opponent can do in any given situation. Because you can't ignore the fact that a Dracovish with access to strong jaw potentially and fish's rend is going to be doing a ton of damage to pokemon like arcanine pokemon like excadrill who marco are hasn't fallen victim to that though he yet. he hasn't but i think it's not so much that i'm expecting him to fall victim to it i'm s what i'm trying to say is he can use the draco fish mm -hmm. to try and force eric to act in a predictable way mm -hmm. and then That's true. use the fact that the gastrodon has to enter the field to avoid that super powerful attack to maybe yeah. stop that Excadrill from yeah. navigating like we've seen earlier on. It, it's a possible adjustment. I don't think he necessarily needs to make one, 
but if you're looking to try and find a way to win your game three to get into top four at an international championship if you go with the same lead three times in a row you just have to be that much more solid in your strategy because the element of surprise at that point may be gone absolutely this is the last game you gotta give it everything that you got yeah one of these trainers this. yeah one of these trainers is going home after this so so it's gonna either be uh, Marco or it's gonna be Eric and it, it all comes down to this this team preview this game this uh, this match this one game to decide it all for who is going to move forward and who's gonna be the first one on this side of the bracket to make it to that top four they're both deserving players. We've seen them do some incredible work, um, not only on stream, but off stream. And we're about to get into those leads. I'm so excited that, I mean, regardless of what happens in this game, the fact that Marco was able to make it this far in such a large tournament, uh, you know, all the way to top eight with a team that's really unique, you know, the Dragovish, the Sylveon, and the Contelder are, I mean, even okay even if you look at the team like the Duraludon, the dragovish and the sylveon as well it's this really interesting core of you know steel fairy fighting which we haven't seen emerge in this metagame quite yet so i love his team building we'll see how he pilots it to make it into the finals well or well, well top well. four potentially well, 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 <laughs> what do we have here? I think that's a fish. I think that is going to be a fish. <laughs> that is a fish on the field. That is going to be a, the Draco fish. And, the uh, Draco fish on the field. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a fan of alliteration. Can't you tell? I tr I'm trying for you, Gabby. I'm really trying. I, I really <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you for enabling me. <laughs> this uh, is an interesting adjustment, <laughs> though. And this actually tells me a lot about what Marco might be trying to go for. If we are going to see turn one Dynamaxes from both the Extra Girl as well as the Duraludon, remember what we saw before where we did see that Max Knuckle come out from the Duraludon? which really helped to set up the Draco Fish for the second and third turns that we saw it on the field. One thing that's interesting to note, though, is that the Draco Fish will be slower than the Duraludon if that's the strategy that Marco decides to go for, which means there could potentially be one attack where the Draco Fish is going to have its attack lowered by the Intimidate on the opposing side of the field. So I like the switch here from Marco. I think he had to switch after the reveal of that Arcanine, but just like I was saying earlier, Eric has to switch too. Yeah, this is kind of the predictability that you were talking about, showing off the Draco Fish, and now you have to bring in the Gastrodon just in case so that your Arcanine can stay protected in the back and get the Intimidate off. But after those switches, it's time for some Dynamax. x Girl again is going for the Dynamax. You think we're going to see Duraludon go for it too? I mean, well, we're about to find out. Wait for it. There, there it, goes. it is. Yeah. I was going to say, there's a, you know, zero percent chance we don't see the Duraludon try to Dynamax. You uh, you mentioned it before during your, uh, you know, in, in between the game analysis that you almost have to go for the Dynamax in the early part of the game if you have the Duraludon on the field. And as a part of the core of the team, you definitely want to see that happen but max pick again this is definitely a pretty classic move coming out from eric but this time it's still going to do basically the same amount of damage let's see what happens next though because gastron with the special defense boost is really scary it is but marco has a bunch of physical attackers on his side of the field as well i was hoping to see this duraludon go for something like the max knuckle knowing that the compelder was going to be switching in mm -hmm. you know a plus one attack guts play more already burned Kunk Elder would have been a very scary thing for Eric to be staring down. Yeah. So I think though going for the attack drop on the Excadrill is okay. We've seen the damage calcs play out. We know that it's possible for the Duraludon to take another hit from this Excadrill after the attack drop. But I think that trying to set up the Kunk Elder and the Dragovish for Marco, kind of like w what we were saying earlier, are, is really going to oh. be the crux for him to win this. Oh. But another adjustment. Yeah, we are going to see an adjustment. Duraludon seems to have gotten oh. out exactly what it wants to, and Rodom Heat coming out in its place. Gastrodon as well going to get the switch out. I mean, we've seen Eric two games in a row go for a double Max Quake into that slot. So we're going to have to find out whether or not that's going to happen again. But we got to remember that the 
our uh, Excadrill does have that mold, mold breaker, breaker ability, so Rotom Heat's not going to be able to take this one. That's going to be a clean one-hit knockout. But Rotom Heat, as the adjustment over Whimsicott, would have been super interesting if it was able to hang out on the field for just a little longer than the brief moment we just saw. <laughs> Conkelter, though, free and untargeted to go for a drain punch. Whoa. And also HP, the critical hit. the hold item on Excadrill. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit unsure there after the critical hit. I was like, okay, that has to be a focus sash. But <laughs> again, good information here and puts Excadrill within knockout range from something like a mock punch. And again, Eric in a position where he's almost going to be forced to switch in that Gastrodon. Having the Dracovish and the Conkelder on the field side by side is a decent position for Marco knowing that, you know, the Arcanine, the Gastrodon, and most likely the Togekiss are the Pokemon in the back of Eric's party. He has the Duraludon for later to hopefully pick up the KO onto that Togekiss and uh, really forces that Excadrill off the field. It's an interesting Pokemon to preserve, especially when it only has one health point left, but I'm sure Eric has a plan. Ooh, Dracovish though, going for the Rock Slide. This is going to be super effective damage onto the Arcanine. Not doing too much to the Gastro, but the Arcanine oh, that's gets why you do it. That's why you do it. That's why you go for the Rock Slides. And oh, oh my goodness, man. would you look at that RNG? Oh man, the freeze from the Ice Punch, the flinch from the Rock Slide. There is somebody smiling at Marco today after that last turn. Knowing that Dracovich has access to Rock Slide as well is going to make this match really uncomfortable for Eric moving forwards. He can't afford to ignore the Dracovish with Gastrodon any no anymore because every turn he ignores it, it's just one more turn he can flinch or wow. potentially pick up knockouts. Does get the knockout, with it a was critical a critical hit. hit. Remember, looking at the damage count before, Harkonnen could have potentially had a chance to survive. So now this Drain Punch on the Conkelder going to go into the Gastrodon. Gastrodon able to hang on with just a little bit of HP, but that is such an important knockout to get. Gastrodon does get a chance to go for the recover, but there's two heavy hitters on the field right now. One of them, which is packing that Rock Slide. In Eric's benefit, I guess the freeze didn't matter as much knowing that Arcanine was just going to get KO'd by a crit later, but you know, that's RNG for you. Sometimes RNG gives, sometimes RNG takes away. And again, I love how Marco just modified how he was positioning these two Pokemon. I think that he was looking to have the Dracofish and the Conkelder side by side all along. Knowing that this Dracovish is the fastest thing on the field can just go for those rock slides and really be unthreatened by the Pokemon that Eric had on the field up until this point just really worked out in his advantage. Now that the Togekiss is on the field, it does make things a little bit more dangerous, but where there is a rock slide, there is always a way. We'll find out. The Togekiss flinches! There's so many flinches happening right now for the rock slides and the drain punch as well, bringing Gastron very, very low once again. The oh my goodness, Gastrodon though able to fire back with that Earth Power going to go into the Dracovish, but it's not doing very much. The fact that Marco ignored the Togekiss to attack the Gastrodon with a Drain Punch is huge to me. I feel like Togekiss is the Pokemon he needs to be afraid of. Yes, he does have that Duraludon in the back, but it's possible that this Togekiss, you know, could take a Steel-type attack if if that uh, Duraludon is given the opportunity. So really just Marco, I think, exhibiting confidence in that Dracovish's rock slide to carry him through into the top four here. This Conkelder is just in a beautiful spot to keep dealing consistent damage. Again, if it's given the opportunity oh. to attack, we'll have to see if we're going to get and another punch. Again. And there is the Ice Punch. What? What crazy, crazy Pokemon here we have today. Oh my gosh, Gastrodon hangs on by just a thread, is able to get off another Earth Power, but there's so much health on this Conkelder. All it's going to take from Marco at this point in time to go on to top four is any attack from this Conkelder, any attack from this Dracovish. Both of the Pokemon on the opposing side of the field are down to their very, very, very last health points. I think if you are Marco, you go for the 
mock punch into the Excadrill and just know that between the Dracofish, between the Duraludon, and between the Conkeldur, you can eventually KO that Gastrodon, even if it recovers. Oh, it's going for the Protect, just trying to stall it out as much as possible, seeing if it can eat the mock punch, which it does, hoping that Excadrill is going to be able to get off one more attack, waiting for the miss, hoping for the miss. Yeah, Doesn't yeah, no get the miss. miss. What an unfortunate turn of events. A critical hit as well. Just this Dracovish is so lucky. This Dracovish is vicious. Vicious, maybe, vicious. Vicious Dracovish. I, I think mm -hmm. that... Should it be called Vicious Rend? Maybe. I mean, I'll probably say it that way if we, you know, commentate for long enough. But Oops. that's either here nor there. <laughs> uh, seriously, congratulations.